Hey there guys, Neil here with another Android app review. So this week's review is actually be, going to be one that's a little bit more um, more on the advanced side of things as, as far as um, accomplishing goes, uh, mainly because it does require rooting your device. Um, if you're not sh quite sure what that entails, um, the best idea is to basically Google your device model number and um, how to root. Be sure to be as specific as possible because of location and um, um, device type and, and um, essentially where you got your device from, carrier, location, all that stuff to make sure you're doing it right. And generally lately, um, it's actually a pretty straightforward and um, easy way to root most devices that are usually comp cross compatible, but still the best thing to do is um, do a proper Google search. Um, the best site to go, or at least where I would start with, is XDA. Just to be on the safe side, it has the best um, forums as far as specific device models, user-based people who have had issues and all of that. So um, go start with that. Once you've rooted your device, what you'll do, as you see me start to do here, is visit repo, R-E-P-O dot exposed dot info. And it's X-P-O-S-E-D, not or basically exposed without the first E. Um, from here, you'll be able to download the APK required to um, install the installer in order to access these modules. So essentially, what or upon installation, you'll be presented with the user interface that you'll see um, sh that I'll show you shortly. But essentially, what exposed um, or the exposed installer allows you to do is extend your the functionality of your Android device with various modules. You don't have to install anything. Um, well, I mean, technically you're installing anything, but it handles everything on the back end. So you don't have to worry about APKs, uninstalling, installing. Will it be compatible? They're set up in a way to be compatible with most devices. Um, there are modules that are device specific. So Samsung module 6 and how Samsung devices work, LG, Motorola, that sort of thing. So it's always useful to be careful there. But the ones that the modules that I find useful to me are the should be cross compatible so um it should more or less be straightforward but as always beware when you're dealing with modules things can happen and to follow the instructions as specifically as possible um the other thing exposed installer allows you to do is that the module or a feature is that the f modules are enabled or disabled essentially at the click of a button um some upon the initial activation you do need to reboot your device so it's something you need to make sure you do um for sure um, as I'll explain uh, among when I'm when I get more into the modules, um, it does require a uh, root as I mentioned earlier, and Android version 4.0.3 or higher for most modules. Um, most of the newer ones I've seen are on Jelly Bean or newer. They will say if they are for a specific module, um, and a couple of them, I or one of them at least that I'm going to go over does have that differentiation. Um, so that's basically the bulk of it there. Um, so with that, I'll start getting jumping into modules. So as you can see here, you have uh, various modules, settings, um, which basically for me in the settings, I didn't change anything except for the theme, which has a light, dark, and black. Um, I set it to dark just because it fits better. Um, you can see more about who developed the app and how to support them. Um, the first thing to do after installing the installer itself is to have it installed into your device um, in order to have the modules work properly. So from here, you'll touch the um, install update button. Upon installation, it'll ask you to reboot your device, which you'll do. And from here, you're, that's basically it. Once your device comes back up again, you'll jump into the download category. Um, from here, you see a whole bunch of different um, modules that do a whole bunch of different things. Um, you can do a search and um, let's say you want something to help you reboot your device so you can start typing reboot and you get all sorts of different um, options like the status bar mod, advanced power menu, uh, boot manager, um, if you're on lollipop, lo lollipop lock screen mods and things like that. Um, you can also do a sort based on the status last update when it was created. I have it sorted by last update so I can see if there's anything that's been updated recently and installed from there. Um, from here, you'll go into modules, or once you've installed a module, you'll be able to activate and deactivate them here. Um, so I'll jump into those in a second, um, but that's basically the bulk of the app. 
So the first and most straightforward module that I found that's useful to me is called the boot manager. So I'll pull it up in the search menu. Um, I already have it installed, but what boot manager does is it allows you to have only apps you want start at when your system boots up. So essentially it allows for a faster boot time um, and fewer initial resource usage. So that way you're in control of what's starting on your device. Let's say you um, your phone recently died and you're charging it and you want to have it start up as soon as possible and have less um, power usage, then it might be useful there. Um, and actually what I forgot to show is um, the installation screen. But once you uh, see a module like you like, let's say you like it, you can see some um, description, additional information. Support is usually, a support link is usually provided on most um, of these modules. From here, you'll swipe um, left, right to left and you'll see all the recent versions. Um, I have the most recent version installed, so you'll hit download. And once the download is done, you hit install. Um, from here, um, you'll go back to the module screen and here you'll activate and deactivate. You can activate and deactivate it. So here's uh, boot manager. Um, you have various options. So let's say I wanna get rid of it, see more information. Um, download it or find updates, I can do that. Um, most of these modules have a UI. So in this case, I'll touch Boot Manager. It'll open, in air quotes, an app. And you'll see any app that is required to, that is currently listed as starting up with my uh, device launch or boot. So you see all these different apps. Um, the ones that are highlighted in red, I have set to not boot at launch because I don't really need them to um, boot at launch and uh, nothing really will affect my device if I don't have them. So, uh, for example, Amazon Music, Facebook, Firefox, Instagram, Skype. I don't really use those enough to where it's needed at launch. Even Viber, so I can just sit there and click there and that is done. Um, so that's one of the simpler modules to use. Um, the one thing you will get a notification for once you enable a module is the need to reboot your device to activate it. So the, in order for your module to work, you will have to reboot your device. So make sure you do that first in order for it to work properly. Um, if you find you forgot to reboot your device or didn't work, um, the easiest method I found for me is to simply reinstall the module. Just go back into the download screen, go to that module. When you hit install, it'll ask you to act, um, it may ask you to reboot here or you can deactivate, reactivate it in the module screen and reboot your device that should fix it. So that is um, Boot Manager. Another cool uh, module that I've recently looked into is um, a module called Zoom for Instagram. So what this module does is it allows you to view and uh, resize and do a few different things with pictures in Instagram. So as you know, when you go to Instagram, um, there's not much you can do. You can view pictures and um, like them or heart them, and that's about it, or get a link to share it. But let's say you want to do more. So you, let's say you want to zoom in on a picture because you want to check the detail. or you, um, Let's say that you shared a picture to Instagram, and um, you realize that, and then you accidentally, let's say, deleted it from your um, device, then... Um, this is a way to get that picture back and it's relatively easy so i'll jump into that and as i mentioned earlier uh, most um, modules have a ui for you to interact with as far as um, changing settings in this case zoom for instagram does not have one because it is actually a relatively straightforward um, feature to use so um, all i can show you um, that feature right now so i'll go into instagram so let's say I am going through my pictures and I realized that um, there was a picture I really liked. So I went to a baseball game last night and I w accidentally deleted this picture. Then you'll see this box show up right here and it allows you to, it opens up the picture and now I can uh, zoom in, I can pan around and I can look at um, all the different features. Um, you can add a picture to a bookmark if you via the official um, Zoom for Instagram app, I didn't install that because I don't really need to favorite my own pictures. But um, hitting save will save it to your device so you get a nice notification on your screen. 
Um, you can also use the three stars to open the picture in a browser. So if you want to uh, see the full picture and uh, zoom around that way as well, uh, you can do that and then save it this way as well. It'll save in your downloads folder uh, rather than your than the Zoom for Instagram folder. Um, I'm not going to browse into that. I have a few personal pictures that I can't really share or show, but um, basically it's saved into your gallery. So once you save a picture, then... Um, it is saved and you can do whatever you want. You can share it, back it up, um, print it, whatever you want to do. So um, that is really all there is for Zoom for Instagram. So now let's say um, you don't really need the, um, or there, let's say there's another, you don't really care about the zooming and um, panning around features or you don't really need to open it in a browser you want a low-end module as far as just saving your um, pictures that's where X Insta comes into play um, it doesn't offer any of the extra features like zooming or panning around or opening a browser all it does is allows you to download your pictures and video from Instagram which is where it shines it also lets you download the video so if you have a video shared um, that you really liked you can do that as well and then you can set the picture as wallpaper, much like Zoom for Instagram. The video, the picture resolution is the same, 750 by 750 at the moment. So in this case, um, it's X Insta. So this one actually does have a user interface. This is well, this one installs a little bit differently. So once you install it and activate it, you do need to update the hook. So you'll have to pick the GitHub or Pastebin hook in order for it to link to Instagram. Um, this one though, you can actually, you have a couple of options. You can save or select where your pictures or images are saved. So this is where my pictures will be saved. I have them saved, both saving to the Instagram folder. So I know exactly, so it shows up in my gallery as a Instagram uh, media. Um, so essentially it's the same thing. So I'll go back into Instagram. I'll go back to, or I'm still on my page. Um, so let's say I want to save this pictures of these flowers that I took a while back. Um, I can touch the dots and you'll see a, um, a download button. I touch it, it downloads um, the, the picture and it gives me a nice notification to say that it has downloaded and that is that. So a little bit easier or granted less features in Zoom for Instagram if you want to zoom around, but once you save the image, then you can do the same thing in your gallery. So um, you can save it first and zoom around or you can zoom first, see if it's one you want to save to begin with and go about that route. So that's really all for that. So now, um, into something that is probably a little bit more useful and that's a module called the awesome pop-up window. So in, in this case, you see three, um, modules with the same icon. Um, I will jump into the first two. So the Twitch module and the YouTube module. Um, those are merely plug or plugins, so to speak. There's no UI, um, but they are required for their related sites. Um, for awesome pop-up video, though, what it does is it allows you to um, view YouTube and other various um, videos as its own video or in its own window. So, in this case, I'll go into YouTube. Um, in this case, uh, let's say I am looking at one of my old videos and I realize that I want I need to send a message or I want to share it to somebody. So let's say I'm looking at this firework video that I took. I'll get a notification that says from the awesome pop up video that'll pop it up into its own video like you see there. And I can drag it around. So now let's say I go into Feedly because I'm reading some articles. Um it'll open up Feedly. I can rotate my video um, and it still shows up and then I can move it around like so. Um, and the video also has the ability to make it in full screen. Um, so I'll tap on the notification again to get it back. Um, I'll hit play start, or start the video over again if I can. Um, but so once the video started, I can start playing it in full screen, take it out of full screen. Um, if I'm done with it, I can close it and that's all there is to that. So you can do that with any video so you can go about reading and doing other things um, while you're watching the video. So let's say you're watching a how-to video or you're installing exposed modules and you want to kind of see where um, the same thing I'm looking at, then um, you can, with this module installed, you can have the video playing at the same time 
and uh, look at the modules themselves. So um, the other thing, though, to think, consider for awesome pop-up video, though, is that for Twitch and YouTube, they do require their own uh, module. So this one and this one um, because of extra features that it requires to work. So um, if it doesn't work, but it's by installing the awesome pop-up video module, that's probably why it's not working. The module though is also compatible with Vimeo, Chrome, and any other place um, that video is playing. So anytime there is a video playing, you'll see get you'll get a nice uh, pop up saying it's ready to or a notification saying that you can watch the video in its window or own window and go from there. If you have heads up notifications um, in, are enabled or have the ability to have a head, heads up notifications, then you'll be able to do it with a single touch there and uh, rather than having to swipe and touch it but uh, that is basically all there is for that so if you want to have a picture in picture sort of viewing um, entertainment you can do that it looks a little or work it should probably work better a little bit on a tablet or a bigger screen device so if you have a phablet so let's say five and a half to six inches or bigger it should work a little bit more easily as far as uh, moving the video around and um going that route as far as um, having a video to watch while doing other things, let's say ch um, text messaging, chatting, um, surfing the web, whatever you want to do. And so finally, the place where Exposed Installer um, shines is via a module called Gravity Box. Um, with this one, you do need to pay careful attention to which one you're installing because there are three current versions. One is for Jelly Bean, another for Kit Kat, and another for Lollipop. So um, you'll see in the um, in Exposed module, you if you take a look at the one I have, I'm on Kit Kat right now. So you see KK for Kit Kat in parentheses. Um, if you're on Jelly Bean, you'll see JB. If you're on Lollipop, LL. So make sure you go into Settings. Um, if you're not sure where that is, go into however you need to get into your system settings. Go into About Phone, and you'll see that I'm on 4.4.4. Um, that is KitKat. Um, you can, I believe that's exactly also where you get your um, Easter egg, so you can see what version of Android you're also on, Android 4.4.4. So um, th make sure you install the right version is basically where I'm going with that. So with that, um, Gravity Box has a whole bunch of settings as you'll see. Um, there's a whole f long menu of different things you can do with it that allows you to tweak your interface. I'm only going to cover the ones that I use, or at least the ones where that are actually super useful. So the first one we see here is lock screen tweaks. Um, you can set your background style, so whether you want your default wallpaper, whether it, if you have a custom one or... That's a plain one like I do. Um, you can do a color fill and set your color. Um, or you can have a custom image, whatever your last screen was. I just have my default wallpaper so it changes for where it goes. Um, I have the background opacity at 50%, so it's a little bit transparent. Um, I'm on Cyanogen mod right now, so it has its own um, ring targets. Um, but you can, if you are using this, set your own targets. Like For example, as you can see here, when I was playing with it, I can set camera, Feedly, Google, um, search, and all of that. And they will show up, which I'll get to in a second. You can also see your battery arc. So whatever your battery percentage is, it will show you in a nice um, bar around your ring, or your primary ring. And then also the ability to enable and disable your flashlight by long pressing on it. So... That's the bulk of the ones I have and then various other widget um, customizations. So when I lock my screen like so and then unlock it, you see my this green bar around the lock screen. So that's approximately matching to the 77%. If I hold down, the flashlight turns on. You see the little um, flashlight in the corner. Long press it again and turns off. And then I also have access to the camera shortcut, Feedly, Google Search, uh, Podcasts, in this case Pocket Cast, and then unlock my phone. So um, essentially this is where um, this comes into play. And in case you guys are wondering, that is a temporary unlock screen. So um, just something to show off as far as the lock screen that... 
the ring targets actually still work on top of your um, um, lock, a secure lock screen. So if you want to use ring targets in addition to having a secure lock screen, then that is also an option. Um, you also have navigation tweaks. So if you want to change the color, have um, various um, different uh, customization options for your back screen and that sort of thing, you can do that. I have mine disabled just because I don't need them. I have a pie control, which I will jump to now. So let's say you don't have a ROM like Cyanogen mod installed, but you want to have shortcut keys like you see here. Um, I have them, you can turn them on in Gravity Box. I have them set to always. Um, in this case, I also have the custom key enabled and I have it set to search. So I can enable um, Google search from that menu when my screen is unlocked. I also have it in my lock screen so I can get to it quickly in case I need to check traffic or whatever any Google Now related information is. Um, you can set where the pos is positioned. So I have it set only on the bottom, but you can set it to multiple places or one place, two place, anything like that. Um, you can have how, set how big the trigger is and how big the navigation is. Um, if you if it um, depends on how your device is interacting, if you put on the right or left and and interferes with various apps. Um, you can also set how, what happens with new long press on the button. So in this case, my back arrow um, turns my screen off. The home key allows me to get to the reboot menu. So if I long press like that, it'll show me my power menu. And then my recent key long pressing on that will take a screenshot. So just like that, it'll take a screenshot, easy as that. Um, and I get my notification that the screenshot is captured. And then you can set various colors. So I have, um, I actually had a different wallpaper set. So my selected color is, matches that wallpaper, but it can, you can set it to whatever you want and have it as uh, transparent or uh, not as transparent as you want. So that's all there is for Pi controls. Um, with power tweaks, you can add or remove things for, or mostly just add stuff to your um, power menu. So um, you can enable the advanced reboot menu. So let's say you want to um, have the ability to reboot your device because it's not there, then you can have that. You can have the ability to um, show the screenshot in your power menu. Um, CyanogenMod Mod actually has that built in, so I already have it. But if you want to have the ability to start a screencast, then um, you can do that. The screen, of course, shows up there as well. And then you have um, other options for um, battery warnings and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, that's the bulk of what I use. Um, you also have different display tweaks if you want to um, set your backlight mode, brightness mm -hmm. settings, rotations, um, things for your phone. So if you want to have um, your caller, if you have pictures set up for your contacts, you can have it set to full, partial, or disable. I have it set to full. So let's say I'm driving, I can see e more easily whose picture it is. Um, media tweaks for what happens with volume, um, levels, me um, control buttons, things like that. If you have Google Now Launcher, you can set the default number of rows and columns, the ability to resize any widget. Um, and then screen recording options, you can set the video bit rate, time limit, things like that. And then other tweaks, so your recent uh, menu where the bar up here shows up um, at the top right, translucent um, navigation bars, um, all of that good stuff. Um, so there's all sorts of things everywhere. Um, I can't keep track of everything where everything is, but you can even do things like screen off effect. So if you wanted to have fade, have C, uh, CRT look, um, um, let's see what else, um, various things like that all over the place. So I, for me, it's mostly just um, the Pi controls and the lock screen, um, the ring targets, just because that is actually where I prefer to, or I, I actually get to those, use those various apps that much. So. I want to be able to launch my camera that much easily. And granted, I don't really use a flashlight that much, but it makes it easy. And then um, the only issue that I have right now, because I am using um, the exposed module on top of CyanogenMod, mod that I have to sometimes double enter my secure lock screen. So that's something to consider. But if you only have the single 
uh, or if you have you're using expose module on top of your stock ROM, then it should not be an issue. But I haven't actually tested it, or I don't have a device to check it on um, a stock device. Um, the other cool thing though that is on that um, expose module allows me to do or allows you to do is status bar um, changes. So you can uh, change the colors of your icons. So for example, if I want my icons to be a uh, shade of purple, I can do that and it changes them like that. And um, you can have jelly bean icon style or Kit Kat um, and then anything mm -hmm. like that. I don't really need it, so I don't didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I know in some in here as well, for, you can also have certain um, changes made as far as your quick settings um, controls. Um, in Cyanogen mod, it's already built in, so um, you have those various reorder options and things like that. But um, you can uh, enable and disable whichever ones you want. They're all an option in uh, Gravity Box. You have tile specific settings of so what happens when you touch them. Um, so what happens when you for a quick pull down you can have it um off or swipe from the right of your notification drawer or the left and that sort of thing so definitely something to check out and then also battery settings what indicator is shown what your clock indicators are doing um all of this has actually just been to help me remember where the um jelly or like kit or sorry the lollipop um icon indicators are i know they're in here somewhere but for the life of me, I couldn't, I don't remember how, where I found it the first time, but, um, actually there it is, single, signal cluster settings, so if I enable or click on use lollipop icons, I can enable that, restart my device, like it says, make sure that's something you're going to remember to do in order for it to, uh, work, and then you can also have signals for, um data activity for your mobile data in case that's in case you don't have it or you want to use that as well led lte indicator style as well so all sorts of different options so um the easiest thing to do is to visit repo.expose.info to get started make sure you have your device rooted um if you're not sure about how, if you're if you're um if you were able to root your device properly um, you can do things. You can install, for example, the super user app, and if it is able to gain access, then you're rooted, and you should be good from there. So something to consider. Uh, but that is actually all for this particular review. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if I went too fast, too slow, you need me to cover or look at something before you install a module, you can always email me at headphonesneil at yahoo.com or find me on Twitter at pateln01. But that is all for this app review. Thanks for watching and listening, and until next time.